Welcome friends to the Ravensburger channel. My name is Joel Stronlich, and in this video, we're gonna be learning how to play the two to four player board game, Marvel Villainous by Ravensburger. Do you have what it takes to dominate the Marvel Universe? In Marvel Villainous, each player takes on the role of an iconic Marvel villain with their own nefarious objective to complete. Throughout the game, you move around your villain's domain to collect resources and play cards that summon allies, apply unique effects, or meddle with your opponent's schemes. Be the first villain to complete your objective to win. If you've played other villainous systems, Marvel Villainous's shared fate deck and events set it apart as the most interactive and competitive villainous game. More on that later. First, choose your villain. Grab the corresponding mover, villain domain, deck of villain cards, villain guide, and a handy reference card. These last two are the ultimate cheat sheets. Your villain guide details your objectives with strategy tips and a preview of key villain cards you should look out for later. If your villain has special cards, tokens, or other components, your villain guide will let you know. Check the description below for links to villain guide videos. Everyone's objectives and symbols used in the game can be found on the reference card. Set up your villain domain in front of you. Place your mover on your portrait and your shuffled villain deck to the left of your domain. Fill the vault with power and strength tokens and place it in the center of the table. Finally, let's set up that fate deck I mentioned. The fate deck contains pesky heroes and events that can mess with you and your opponent's plans. Each villain comes with a stack of fate cards with their villain symbol in the lower right corner. Targeted fate cards are more powerful against the villain they target, but are super effective against any villain. In Marvel Villainous, there's also a common fate deck. Just like in the Marvel Universe, the Common Fate deck contains heroes or teams of heroes who have faced many different Marvel villains. If this is your first time playing, we suggest removing all event cards from the Fate deck. Otherwise, shuffle the Common Fate deck with the Fate cards from each villain playing the game into a single Fate deck. Place this next to the Vault. Draw four cards from your villain deck for a starting hand. And let's play! Play starts with the last player who read a Marvel comic. When in doubt, the oldest player goes first, and play proceeds clockwise. The first player starts with no power tokens. The second player starts with one, while the third and fourth players start with two power. In turn order, each player reads their objective aloud in their most maniacal voice. On your turn, there are three steps. One, move your villain from its current location to a different location in your domain. Number two, perform your actions. Each location has icons representing actions you may take that turn. You can perform the actions in any order, and all actions are optional. And number three, draw cards until you have four in your hand. Now, let's delve a little deeper into each action, shall we? You must move your villain to a new location, and this new location will tell you what actions you can take this turn. This symbol here allows you to collect power from the vault equal to the number in the icon and place it on your portrait. These tokens are vital for playing cards and activating abilities. The play a card action allows you to play one card for every like symbol at your location. Activate actions give you the ability to pay a card's activation cost and then perform the card's activated ability. Activated abilities are found on items, specialty, and even ally cards. With the relocate action, you may move one of your allies or items from a location in your domain to another location within your domain or you can move one of your allies from another villain's domain to a location within your domain. Optionally, you may move one of your allies to an event fate card. More on that later. Use the strength of your allies to defeat pesky do-gooders when you utilize the vanquish action. Each hero has a strength in the lower left corner and your allies must have a collective strength equal to or greater than the character you choose to vanquish. After using this action, both the allies and the hero are placed in their respective discard piles. This symbol lets you discard as many cards as you wish face up into their discard pile. Getting rid of unwanted cards can help give you new options on your next turn. It's important to note that you may not draw cards until the end of your turn no matter when you discard. Playing dirty is par for the course as a Marvel villain. Utilizing the fate action, you reveal one card from the top of the fate deck and choose which player to target to sow mayhem in your opponent's domains. You may not use a fate action to play cards into your own domain, and if you draw a card and cannot play it, it must be discarded with no effect. When you've resolved all your actions, if you have fewer than four cards in your hand, draw from your villain deck until you've reached the starting amount. If you run out of cards in your villain deck, shuffle your villain discard pile to form a new deck and continue your draw. This ends your turn and play continues clockwise. 
Villain decks consist of cards that will require you to pay a power cost noted in the top left corner. Possible cards include effect cards, which are one-time abilities, ally cards that represent your villain's henchmen, allies can be played in your domain at the bottom of the location you are choosing, or on fate event cards. Most allies have abilities that affect other cards in action. Similarly, item cards have abilities that affect cards or actions that are sometimes attached to allies. Finally, specialty cards are, well, special. They offer an ongoing ability that villains can use on their turn. These are placed in the rightmost space in your domain, and each specialty card can be used once per turn. An important thing to keep in mind, a card may change a rule, and a card will always take precedence over a rule. Finally, let's talk about what makes Marvel Villainous special. Fake cards and events. Fake cards consist of three types of cards, effects, heroes, and events. Effect cards are one-time abilities. When drawn, choose an opponent to target. Hero cards represent heroes trying to stop villains from accomplishing their sinister plans. When heroes are drawn, choose an opponent and place the hero card so it covers the top of any location in the targeted player's domain, blocking actions in that location. Each hero has a strength that can be modified by other cards and have abilities that make it harder for a villain to achieve their goal. For example, some heroes have the Protector ability. If there are multiple heroes at a location, you must defeat the hero with the Protector ability first. And then there are Event Cards. Event Cards are situations that inflict powerful and negative effects on villains. Think the Avengers assembling to bring down every villain. The penalty is ongoing, and each villain must deal with it in their own turn until the event is resolved. When a global event is revealed during a fate action, immediately play it to the center of the table, unless there's already a global event in play. Each event has a strength requirement in the lower left corner. In order to resolve the event, you must play allies directly to the event itself or use a relocate action to move allies from your domain to the event. Similar to defeating heroes, once the combined strength of all the allies meets or exceeds the strength of the event, it is immediately resolved. All villains with allies at the event receive a reward for resolving it. Targeted events must be played against the villain indicated by the icon on the lower right corner whether or not a global event is in play. If you draw a targeted event card for your own villain, discard it without effect. Otherwise, place this targeted event above the indicated villain's domain. This is a personal vendetta only that villain can solve. And that's how you play Ravensburger Marvel Villainous. Check the description below for links to our individual villain guide videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to let us know below in the comments and we'd be happy to help. If you found this video helpful, feel free to like, subscribe, and click to get our notifications on any new material that we're coming out with. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Bye.